Um, esophageal cancer is, is growing in incidence quicker than virtually any other cancer in the Western world at the moment. And it's increased in incidence probably 40, 40 times greater in incidence now than it was when I started training. Um, so it, it's, it's been a huge uh, a, a problem for, 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 for patients and, 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 and healthcare in the last few decades. Um, the esophagus is in a fairly awkward place. It's in the middle of the chest between the lungs and the heart. So the treatment of it is always very challenging. It presents by, the most common way it presents is by causing difficulty in, in swallowing. So food sticking as, it, as you swallow it and as it goes down the esophagus into the stomach. That's often quite a late sign. Um, so we, we're really keen on looking for, for early signs of esophageal cancer. And one of the early signs of esophageal cancer is new onset acid reflux or indigestion type symptoms, where you have a sense of heartburn in the chest or perhaps food repeating on you or perhaps even excessive um, and belching. So any new onset symptoms of indigestion, particularly heartburn, in, in someone over the age of about 45 or 50 really should be investigated just in case it may mean there's a cancer there. Of course, most people won't have a cancer, but it's important to investigate just in case. Um, so it's slightly commoner in males and females. Um, age group is, is most common age group is people in their 50s and 60s but I but I have seen patients as young as 18 with it and clearly in very elderly patients as well. Um, the main risk factor for esophageal cancer in, in the western world and, and it certainly is is acid reflux. So heartburn and, and, and a long history of heartburn and indigestion we know is a risk factor for esophageal cancer. And it can cause a condition called Barrett's esophagus, uh, where the lining of the esophagus undergoes changes in response to long term acid reflux. And that can then develop into esophageal cancer. Uh, so there's a real importance in identifying people with long term reflux and particularly those patients who are known to have Barrett's esophagus, because then we would keep a very close eye on them doing regular endoscopies to, to try and pick up any further changes. Um, the most important investigation, if you have any of these worrying symptoms, is to have a, an upper gastrointestinal endoscopy or, or gastroscopy, it's called, which involves putting a camera down through the mouth or sometimes even through the nose, but looking down into the esophagus and the stomach. Um, and that's the most important way of diagnosing it. Um, so th the main curative treatment for esophageal cancer involves major surgery. Um, there are some exceptions that occasionally, and in one of the slightly more unusual types of esophageal cancer, we can treat with chemotherapy and radiotherapy alone. But for the commonest type of esophageal cancer, which is called an adenocarcinoma, the best treatment, the most effective treatment and the best chance of curing it involves very major surgery to remove the esophagus. Now, that by itself is, is rarely sufficient. So we, in most patients, give chemotherapy or chemotherapy and radiotherapy combined prior to surgery. But surgery is the mainstay of treatment. And I'll add in one more thing, which is to say increasingly in very early esophageal cancer, where it's confined just to the innermost lining of the esophagus, we can treat that now endoscopically, i.e. doing a gastroscopy, just putting a camera down and removing it that way. And that's done as an outpatient procedure. So if we do pick it up very early, we can treat it that way. And that in many ways, it justifies that what I was saying earlier, which is that, that we don't really want to invest, wait to do an investigation until someone's got swallowing problems. We want to pick it up really early, perhaps when you've got new onset reflux symptoms, so we can treat it at an early stage. Um, really good question. And of course, what we this, this, this is such a 
potentially difficult cancer to treat and it involves such major treatment with chemotherapy, radiotherapy and major surgery that of course we have to put a lot of effort into trying to prevent it in the first place. Um, the, the major cause is acid reflux and therefore the, the most important way of preventing is to try and prevent and treat acid reflux. So the sort of things that make reflux much worse, a poor diet. And I think that as I have progressed through my career, um, uh, it's become increasingly important to me how important one's diet is. And dietary changes, eating healthily is probably the single most important thing that patients can do in terms of preventing a whole host of different illnesses, but particularly preventing esophageal cancer. So doing everything to minimize the chance of reflux, changing your diet. If you are overweight, losing weight, because that makes reflux worse. And then avoiding um, particular risk factors like smoking and drinking alcohol to excess, eating very rich, fatty foods or spicy foods.